when I met the Handicapped Scuba Association at the Abilities Expo and they told me I could scuba dive. I was just fascinated and so excited. So I went on a trip with them to the Cayman Islands to try scuba diving. And from that time on, I was just hooked. Owner of the store came up to me. He says, I'm going to get you in the water. And I just looked at him and said, you're going to do what? Are you out of your mind? He says, no, seriously. He says, I'm an instructor with the Handicap Scuba Association. And I'd already heard of them. So I said, hmm, okay, let's try it. So he threw me in the water, and we tried some stuff in the water. And I think that, that what really hooked me on it and what made me go back when I got home and, and pursue it was the first thing I did when I got down there was I looked up, and I exhaled, and I could see my bubbles going up. And that was the most exciting thing that had ever happened to me since my injury. People just pretty much use regular equipment except for um, the wetsuits are modified with long zippers to facilitate putting it on and uh, webbed gloves make it so much easier to propel yourself through the water since you can't kick. You know, a lot of people will go down and they'll see how much mileage they can cover and they don't see anything. I'm the type of diver who goes down, meanders very slowly. The reason why I do that is I see more. Also, the, the animal life down there isn't afraid of me when I do that. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just sit in the bottom and just kind of huddle up a little because it is so cold and just wait. And I just look up and, and watch, look at the kelp and the sunlight coming through it. And I'm sure we've, we've all seen pictures of the sun going through the kelp fields. It's, it's beautiful. But then after a couple of minutes, the animals start coming out and getting inquisitive as to what the heck is in my neighborhood. Probably the most limited person I've seen in all my, on all my trips that I've been doing was a very high level quadriplegic. And really he couldn't move anything. Um, but he had two dive buddies that would go with him and do his controls and pull him along in the water. You don't hear of that many diving accidents. It's because most divers are responsible. And the training I got was extremely thorough. So what happens is I become a responsible diver and I don't worry about it. What's the worst that could happen? I could die. And, but I could walk outside, I could hit by a car and die. I can't live in fear of what's going to happen to me, uh, you know, in the next moment. So I, I live life to its fullest, and that's that's part of one of the reasons why I did this. Virtually everyone I've ever trained and uh, and had gone on these trips will tell you that their their lives have uh, been changed by the diving. It just it it is such an integrated sport. There's no way to really change the environment. The environment stays the same. So you have to learn how to deal with that environment. Just about anybody can do it. Uh, there are some restrictions like seizure disorders um, and their ventilators that hasn't been worked out. But uh, if a person has fair respiratory function and can, uh, even if they can't move at all, there are ways to teach them to dive so that they can have a wonderful uh, diving experience.